Welcome to the lecture of financial management. The topic that we are discussing is stock valuation. This is the chapter that we had been discussing for past few lectures. So let's move to the contents. We are going to cover the components of required rate of return. What are what are different components that are there in the required rate of return? And then we we will see uh, a different valuation method, which is called the valuation using a price to earning ratio. So you you know what price to earning ratio is. You have understood it in the ratio analysis section. Uh, now we are going to use that price to earning ratio to evaluate the stock um, um, the, uh, to to find the intrinsic value of the stock. So let's move to the topic. So the first topic that we are discussing is components of the required rate of return. Now, before uh, let me let me get a um, blank slide and we would see. Um, let's develop the understanding of this concept. So, whenever we buy a, a, a an asset, right, whichever asset that is. <coughs> its total return depends on two components one is called the income component and the second one is called capital gain so there are two components of total return um, the income component and the capital gain <clears throat> let's say uh, you buy a, a real estate a building and you rent it out so let's say you bought it at uh, for 10 million right and uh, you hold it for one year and after one year uh, its price increased to 11 million <clears throat> now uh, what is your return in this case so what was your return your return was 1 million right uh, the difference between the buying price and the selling price during this one year time period what you did is you let's say uh, you, uh, you rent that property out and uh, from that rent say for example you also earned a 1 million uh, dollars so what you have essentially uh, is that there is a 1 million uh, of rent income and then there is 1 million of uh, the increase in price so this 1 million that you have earned from uh, uh, by renting out that uh, property is called the income component of the asset <coughs> why this is the component that you get while holding the asset now your total return would be equal to this income component plus the uh, uh, the gain that you have got from the change in price So, so 1 million was uh, from the income component and then there was 1 million from the change in price and the change in price the, the earning that we do from the change in price is what we call the capital gain. <coughs> so, uh, so, so, so our total return is basically 2 million right and if we convert this into percentage then this would be the capital gain would be uh, 1 million divided by 10 million this would be the percentage. Uh, that would be 10% right 0 0.10 and similar is the case for the income component it would also be 10% so our total return basically is at 20% so this was uh, the example of uh, real estate let's say if we take the example of a bond so in bond the income component is the interest the capital gain is the change in price of the bond so the total return from the bond would be equal to the uh, income component the return from the income component and um, plus the return from the change in price similar is the case with stock there are two components one is the income which is the dividend part we get the dividend when we hold the asset and th then there is a capital gain which is the change in price of the uh, stock so our total return of a stock would depend on two aspects its income component and its capital gain so let's move back to to this slide so our required rate of return our return uh, is equal to the uh, d1 divided by p naught which is essentially the 
uh, this is what we call dividend yield remember in bond valuation we had a term which was called coupon yield it isn't ytm it was coupon yield and what coupon yield was it was the coupon divided by the um, the, the 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 value of the stock or the buying price of the stock so similarly we have dividend yield which is dividend divided by the uh, the price of the stock so a stock expected cash dividend divided by its current price would give us the dividend yield it is the percentage return um, or the percentage of dividend that we have earned as compared to the stock price it is similar concept as current yield in in the case of bond the second is the the capital gain which here it is represented by g and why do we represent it by g remember we we, we understood that the price of a stock would increase by the similar rate by which the dividend would increase so the growth rate of dividend and the growth rate of price would be similar so based on this if the dividend would grow by 10% let us just say then that that also means that the price would also grow by 10% so our return on this price is 10% so adding that up would give us the total return or the required rate of return just to uh, be clear the, uh, the dividend growth rate or the rate at which the value of investment would grow so this this g is this the same as the the rate at which dividend would grow which is also the same rate at which the value of our investment or the stock price would grow so let's have an example <coughs> the engro fertilizer will, will pay a dividend of 2.3 rupees per share this is our d d1 remember it will pay for the next year and the dividend will grow at a constant rate of 6% this is g if the current price is 87 this is our p naught what return does this stock offer so so how much uh, return this stock would offer so remember the return would depend on um, or it it would it would be the um, the income component uh, plus the capital gain and in previous uh, formula we know that the income component in case of stock would be measured as d1 which is uh, 2.3 divided by 87 plus the capital gain is already in the percentage form it is 6% so the answer would be this this would be 2.6% plus the six percent so the total would be uh, eight point six percent so the, so if we buy this stock this stock of angular fertilizer uh, our total return for uh, for one year would be eight point six percent so now we can compare this total return with the total return of another stock let's just say the stock of uh, pakistan state oil um, pso and we can come up with a decision whether we should uh, you know buy this stock or the um, or this one but uh, but this is how we calculate the total return of the stock so let's move forward and uh, this is the last uh, uh, topic of our um, stock valuation chapter now we have already uh, you know uh, discussed one method of uh, stock valuation and that was dividend discount model and there were different uh, different types of dividend discount models there is one other type uh, one other method of stock valuation which is called uh, price to earning multiple or stock valuation based on multiples so remember from your uh, from your understanding of ratio analysis you know that price to earning ratio is measured uh, as the current price divided by the earning per share which is which is what we call eps and this earning per share is the net income divided by um, the total number of outstanding shares but anyhow this is this is our uh, formula for price to earning ratio 
Now, previously when we were um, we were studying ratio analysis, we needed to find this price to earning ratio. And and what price to earning ratio um, would, would had meant, what would its interpretation be? Let's say the answer was uh, two. So it would mean for for every one uh, dollar of earning, the we have to pay two rupees of uh, for, for that stock. So so this was what we we were we were um, you know understanding. But in this case, we we are not interested in, in price to earning ratio. What we are interested in is the current price of the stock. So if we use the same equation and let's say if we somehow are given this price to earning ratio and the EPS, then what we can do is find this, uh, this unknown va value. And if we convert this formula to find the P0, then P0 would be equal to price to earning ratio into EPS, earning per share. But here I have written benchmark price to earning ratio. Why is that so? Because if we do not know the price, then how would we know the price to earning ratio of that specific company? So that means in this case, we are not going to use the price to earning ratio of that specific company, but somehow we are going to find a benchmark ratio. The benchmark ratio can be an industry average or a historical average or a historical value of the price to earning ratio of that specific company. So let's just say we are trying to find the price uh, price of the intrinsic value of the agro fertilizer. So we can use its uh, price to earning ratio of previous year uh, to to find uh, you know to to use that as a benchmark price to earning ratio and multiply it, it, it with its current earning per share and that way we would get the uh, current price. Um, another way can be that we um, we find find the industry average of price to earning ratio. Say for example agro fertilizer belong to a fertilizer sector. So what we do is we we find the price to earning average of that fertilizer industry and then we use that uh, that price to earning ratio in this formula to find the intrinsic value of this stock but the idea is to use this price to earning ratios formula to find the current price of the stock so let's have an example an analyst estimates that abc company will earn 2.60 dollars per share next year the industry price to earning ratio is 7. The earning per share of ABC is 2.6. This is what we just said. And estimate the price of the stock based on price to earning multiple. So th this would be P0 is equal to benchmark price to earning. The industry benchmark is 7 multiplied by 2.60. And this would give us 18.2. So based on price to earning multiple, we know that the current price of this ABC company should be 18.2 or this is what its intrinsic value is. Okay, so this was the last uh, topic of this stock valuation. And... Uh, uh, from our textbook, uh, it would be uh, it would be preferable to solve these questions, question number one to six. They are related to what we have just discussed, and then you can solve question number thirteen to uh, ten to thirteen. This would uh, clarify your uh, concepts of stock valuation.